A hot steam pipe carries superheated steam at a temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. The steel pipe with the thermal conductivity of 45 watts meters per Kelvin has an inside diameter of 80 millimeters and a wall thickness of about 5.5 no, mils. It is covered with a 90 mil layer of insulation having a thermal conductivity of 0.45 followed by a 40 mil layer insulation with a thermal conductivity of 0.25. If the outer surface temperature is 50 Celsius, what is the steady state rate of heat loss from the steam to the surroundings? So let's put down into drawings what is being said. We have a little pipe. It's carrying steam inside. I don't know which direction steam is going and I don't really care. All I know is that steam is at 250 and the outside is at 50, right? So T ambient or T infinity, as we say, T infinity is at 50. So if that's the case, the only certainty that we have in this life is that Q is gonna go this way, right? We know we're gonna have Q coming from the inside of the steam into the out, uh, outer air, okay? But for it to go there, it needs to cross some barriers, right? So it has some barriers. It has the steel pipe, then it has a little layer of insulation, and it has an outer layer of insulation. So for steam to go, for not steam, sorry, for the heat to go from the center there where the steam is all the way outside to where the air is, it needs to overcome some barriers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this guy here. I have my beautiful eye drawn here. We're gonna be looking like so, and we're gonna be looking into the pipe. And if you look into the pipe, we're gonna have kind of this view, right? So if you can draw circles, draw circles, because I can't really draw circles. And what we can see here is that we have the steam. So this is the steam inside here, steam. <clears throat> then I drew the steel pipe. Then we have insulation, first layer of insulation. And then we have a second layer of insulation. Okay, and you conveniently end with the Brazilian flag. Now, what will happen? What we know is going to happen? We know that Q is gonna leave the center of this guy here. We know it's gonna leave, let me get rid of this. It's gonna leave the center and it's gonna to go to the outside. That's our first thing that we know from looking at this problem. The second thing that we know is that there's no way for this energy to go from the inside to the outside without crossing all the layers. And that is important because if that's the case, it means that we can draw a system in series like the one I put in the bottom here, right? So we're gonna, we know that the energy has to cross the first barrier, which is this resistance here on the steel, then the second resistance on the insulator, and then the third resistance on the second insulator. So we're gonna have our one, two, and three. Our Q is gonna go from 250 to 50, and our resistances will line up nicely so that we can sum them up. Now, students go wrong these questions, they go south when they write down the radiuses, because we're going to have four radiuses in this problem, right? Let me zoom in a bit more. We're going to have four radiuses. Four ra first radius is going into the inner side of the steel pipe. Then we're going to have the second radius. What is going on here? Then we're going to have the second radius, which is to the outer part of the steel pipe. Then we're going to have, actually put this R2 over here so it's more legible third radius which is going to go to the outside of the first insulator and our fourth radius will be there okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the three the four radiuses here on the side and i would like you guys to see if you guys would get it right or wrong so let's see what are the radiuses that we have in this problem first radius is steel pipe has an inside diameter of 80 mils. So if it's 80 mils diameter, our first rate is this. Forty mils, right? Then the pipe has a wall thickness of 5.5 mils. So what is our R2? Is it 45.5? It is indeed, it is indeed. Okay. And here students usually 
they might put 5.5, they might put um, 80.85.5 or something else, okay? So mind you that the reason why it's 45.5 is because it's the R1, right? So it's this, this fella here, this fella here, plus the 5.5 thickness, right? That's our R2. Our R3, in an analogous manner, will be our R2 plus the thickness of the insulator, which is uh, 90. That's 135.5. And our R4 will be our R3 plus the thickness of the insulator, which is 40. And that renders 40. Yeah, 40. So that renders uh, 175.5. Okay. So having these, Doing this with attention and calmly will make you guys probably get these questions right. And these questions love to be on midterms and finals for this unit. So, and this is where, like, honestly, this is where people usually go wrong on this, putting the right is down. Okay, once we do this, you're pretty much good to go because what we're gonna do is calculate R1, R2, and R3. I've color coded them on the bottom there. You can do that. R1, R1 will be the natural log of R2 over R1 divided by two pi KL. Okay, so we have our two, we have our one, we have the conductivity of steel, constant, constant, we don't have L. So what do we do? Either or, right? Assume L of one and put a big star or Oops, not airy, carry. Carry L with. Okay. Um, 45.5, oops. Millimeters divided by 40 millimeters. Two pi. Conductivity for K is 45. And I'm assuming my L to be one. Okay, question that comes up, Pablo, do I need to convert the uh, radiuses into meters? Wouldn't that be more uh, wise to do? Well, it will be wiser in the sense that, yes, usually having meters it's, is what we prefer. But if you look at the equation, what we're doing here is we're cutting millimeters with millimeters, right? So if we were to convert it into meters, we have 10 to the minus three here, 10 to the minus three here, they would both go away. So when we're doing these natural log ones, one over the other, you don't have to, but you can, nothing stopping you from doing that. What did I get? Zero, 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 four, five, six. Okay, that's our first re uh, resistance. Our second resistance, let's do it. And where am I gonna do it? We'll do it here on this one. So resistance number two, that's the yellow one. That's a yellow insulator. Natural log of zero point forty five. And the third one, which is our green one. Point sixteen forty six seven three. So let's just do point sixteen forty seven. Okay, so now we have the three resistances. It's as easy as summing them up. So we're gonna be summing our one, our two, and our three. And from that, we're gonna be getting 0.551.
note that our actual value is pretty much coming from these two insulators, right? The steel is pretty much not doing much. We're actually ignoring the only value it's bringing to the table. Yeah, because we have three zeros and then we have the value for it. I'm not really going all the way down there. Which means that if I want to find my Q, I do my delta T divided by my R. And my, what is my delta T? 400? No, 250 minus 50. So 250 minus 50. And that can be Celsius or Kelvin because it's a difference. Go ahead of Kelvin. Divided by 0.551. Kelvin per what? Give me 362 point, got 93. Are we done? We're not, right? We're not, because we put a big star there so we, did, we wouldn't forget that we were assuming this is per meter of length, right? Because like I said, if I double the amount of pipe that I have, now I have twice as much energy coming out of the pipe, okay? If I have the amount of pipe that I have, then I have half the amount of energy coming out of the pipe. Okay, so that's why it's per unit length. The other idea, the other thing you can do, carry the L with you. Same thing would happen like I showed you last time. Any questions on this problem? 